Back in the 1960s, the Kansas City Chiefs were the first AFL team to go to a Super Bowl and the second AFL team to win one. And that often came at the expense of the then Oakland Raiders. Of all the great players the Chiefs had at that time, interior defensive lineman Buck Buchanan and edge rusher Bobby Bell got in the way the most. So to fix that problem, the Raiders drafted Hall of Fame guard Gene Upshaw and Hall of Fame left tackle Art Shell, and the rest is great Raider history. Now in 2020, the Chiefs just won the Super Bowl with a new cast of players, and the Las Vegas Raiders' two first-round picks are geared toward competing with them. Tyreek Hill has been giving the Raiders problems since he came in the league in 2016. He started out catching bombs from Alex Smith, and now he's with super quarterback Patrick Mahomes. That's not all the Chiefs have. In week two last year, Hill didn't even play against the Raiders and Mahomes still threw four touchdown passes in one quarter. Two of them were to Demarcus Robinson, the other speedster. One of them was to Nicole Hartman, the other other speedster. And of course, you can't leave out tight end Travis Kelsey. He's been killing the Raiders for years. In their week 13 matchup, the Chiefs won 40 to nine, but it wasn't because of the offense. Mahomes only had 175 yards passing on the day and one touchdown. That's because the Raiders got after him even forcing them into some mistakes, but they didn't cash in on them. The coverage was good on the day, as even LaMarcus Joyner got down. And the Raiders started to see they have quite a find in second round cornerback Trayvon Mullen. He locked Hill down on the day allowing just two catches on five targets for 19 yards and no touchdowns. This interception would have been the icing on the cake for his day, but it was wiped out by a bogus pass interference call. When the Raiders passed, all the Chiefs did was jump their routes. Instead of running deep with his man Tyron Williams, Safety Tyron Williams sees tight end Darren Waller comes across the field and jumps his route. And the result is an interception. You can do that when you don't fear the receiver going deep. Here it's going to happen again. Safety Juan Thornhill has deep responsibility and Waller's going deep with a linebacker on him. But he sees Williams coming inside and jumps the route for a pick six. Again, if you have a scary fast receiver in the game, the safeties usually respect that. A week later in a similar passing concept, the Raiders rectified it by sending 4-2 speedster Rico Gafford on an out and up. And the result was a 49 yard touchdown pass for Carr. Gafford should be back this year as the Raiders start their track team at receiver. It looks like Williams will be back to be a part of that track team. The 6'4", 215 pounder ran a 4.42 at the combine, and he's been clocked at over 21 miles an hour in the game. The Raiders just picked up Nelson Aguilar in free agency. He ran a 4.42 at the combine and went just over 21 miles an hour on this play. It would have been higher if he didn't have to stop and wait for the ball. Unlike the Chiefs, the Raiders' tight end is on the track team. He ran a full 440 coming out of school and on this play, he clears 21.7 miles per hour on the gun. And the final member on that track team is first round pick Henry Ruggs. This one play where he slips made scouts think that he can't get off press coverage. But that's only one rep against Christian Fulton. Watch this. That's easy work getting off press. And watch the separation. 
Trust me, after the play he slipped on, he had no issues and press coverage. LSU backed up off him. And he still got open because he's a great route runner. Watch the separation he gets on this play. Then here he is on the pivot route. Ruggs also has great hands, the best in this draft class. He only uses one of them here. How about another look? Ruggs also has the ability to adjust to the ball wherever it's thrown. With this 42 inch vertical leap, he'll go up and get one too. Let's see that again. Another one hander. Rugs can also go up and get one and finish it through contact. Grant Del Pitt's gonna get him here. Speed guys don't normally have this kind of toughness. He's not CD Lamb, but he's not the easiest guy to bring down after the catch. He is not afraid of contact as he protects the ball. While Lamb averaged 11 yards per attempt after the catch, Ruggs averaged 9 in the SEC. You can hit him with a bubble screen. You can even hit him on a hook route and he can re-accelerate and take it to the house. If you don't get him with the first man after the catch, you can pay dearly. And if you don't have someone there right away, he's not going to get touched. Oh, by the way, he got up to 24.3 miles an hour on this play. This is considered a rushing attempt because the pass was thrown backwards, but watch the speed change this play after the catch. It actually changes the game, too. Here goes the good old jet sweep Gruden's been calling lately. The speed Ruggs has is incredible. Watch him shoot this gap with it before it closes. With that kind of speed, there's going to be some deep balls flying. You have to be mighty fast to spin around for an underthrown ball and reaccelerate before the defender can catch you. He's definitely going to help Carr keep up with Mahomes. Damon Arnett was drafted to help slow Hill and his track team down. And right off the bat, I could tell you he's a good tackler. And not just on receivers. 
he'll come up and bring it on a 250 pound tight end as well. When he tackles, he gives it all he has until it's finished. He also likes to get that ball out of there and give it back to his offense. Now the bag. Sometimes he gets there a little bit too early and gets the flag. Another look will show you how early he is, but that's correctable. He plays so physical at the line and I love it, but sometimes he gets a little too grabby. He's gonna learn real quick that as a Raider, you gotta be slicker than that. Another thing as you see him come into the bottom of your screen is he sometimes makes mistakes playing the ball. He's with his man, he locates the ball, then curiously he looks back to play the ball through the receiver's hands. And here he's going to do it again. locate the ball you should play the ball instead of going back to the receiver's hands but I'm nitpicking here because it doesn't happen often and here he is in the slot and he does an excellent job of playing the ball through the receiver's hands let's take a couple more looks at it like I said before I was nitpicking because sometimes he makes mistakes playing the ball through the receiver's hands but he's actually good at it. I'm gonna nitpick some more and that's about him in off coverage. Sometimes he's just not as intense as he is when he's in bump and run. But make no mistake about it, he plays off man coverage very well. He has excellent route recognition skills. can't have the ball near him because he will knock it out. He sees his comeback route coming and he's all over it. And when he sees his dig coming, it's pick six time. For those that are worried about his speed, don't. He ran a 4-5-6 at the combine because he was having back and hamstring issues. Word out of Ohio State is that his top end speed is greater than that of Terry McLaurin, now of the Washington Redskins. McLaurin ran a 4-3-5 at the Combine last year. I Nick picked earlier about Arnett at the catch point, but he's actually really good there. Here he's going to come out the bottom of your screen to bat one down. I can't tell you enough how good of a job he does at getting his hands on the ball. Coming out of the bottom of your screen right now, he is so physical. And after that, he's going to get in your head by chirping at you. He's a dog, so he doesn't stop. He was definitely the most physical corner in the draft. Here he's going to jam him, then he's going to body up on him at the catch point. Here's another look. Here he's going to disrupt the timing to the point where he gives his linebacker a chance to jar the ball loose once he catches it. Another look shows you just how much Arnett disrupted the timing. Here, the quarterback almost gets sacked while Arnett's man gets caught up at the line of scrimmage. Here he's in the receiver's head so much he forgets to catch the ball. He's so worried about pushing Arnett that his arms aren't ready to catch the ball. doesn't always have to touch you either. Sometimes he can just mirror you and get the job done. 
dump and run off man mirror zone our neck can do it all but he's at his best when he can jam you watch this again of all the corners in this draft opposing quarterbacks have the lowest passer rating throwing at our net in man coverage no wonder why Gruden thinks he's better than Jeff Okuda. Watch him go up with Justin Ross, who's 6'4". That's some sticky coverage right there. Let's see that again. Denial. When it comes to running the ball and stopping the run, it's clearly advantage Raiders. But the Chiefs have a huge advantage in passing and overall, as the NFL is no longer a three yards in the cloud of dust league. So the Raiders went out and got rugs to help Carr keep up with Mahomes, who has Hill. Then they got Arnett to help slow guys like Hill down and close the gap. He's faster and better than people think. Shh, don't tell nobody. Thank you for watching. See you next time.